chosen to revise the catheterization in inpatient setting. This is applicable not only in trauma and orthopedics, of course, but in many disciplines of medicine, where normal voiding of the bladder is either not possible or when it's needed for diagnostic purposes. It's important to, not, to know not only how to place one, but when to place it, and in which profile of patient. MM and I will be taking you through the catheterization of a male patient in a stepwise demonstration, highlighting some of the do's and don'ts of this important aseptic procedure. Natalie and I will take you through indications for catheterization, equipment needed for the procedure. We'll also demonstrate the procedure of the placement of an indwelling catheter and make you aware of the complications that can arise from the procedure. Now, catheterization can be useful for either diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. And in therapeutic use, it can be either short-term, which, which is shorter than six weeks, or long-term, which is longer than six weeks. Diagnostic value can be collection of uncontaminated urine specimen, blood extension prior to an ultrasound, urodynamic studies, including cystograms and cystourethrograms, or urinary output monitoring. Some of the short-term uses of therapeutic use can be acute urinary retention, bladder irrigation, or following an epidural anesthesia. And finally, long-term therapeutic use can be in a long-term bladder outlet obstruction, in a neurogenic bladder, or palliative care of terminally ill and incontinent patients. Before we demonstrate the catheterization procedure, we'll first need to run through some of the equipment you may need before you start. First, a catheterization pack. Next, a Foley's catheter, typically in size 12 to 14. Next, you need the catheter bag to attach it to. You will also need antiseptic cleaning solution, sterile gloves, a 10 ml syringe, appropriate needle, and sterile water to draw up. You will also need lubricant, and then finally, you need an adhesive bandage to secure the catheter pipe once the procedure has been completed. Now, we will demonstrate the procedure to you. First, position the patient on his back with his legs slightly apart and lying as flat as possible once consent has been given. Next, using an aseptic technique, open the catheter pack onto the tray or trolley and begin to prepare your sterile field. Now, pour your antiseptic solution into the receiver so that it soaks up the cotton balls in the catheter pack. Next, open up your Foley's catheter onto the sterile field. Next, open up your syringe and needle onto the field. Next, prepare your sterile water by putting it on the side of the sterile field and open it up. Finally, open up your sterile gloves onto the, cat onto the sterile field. Now, finally, wash your hands as you prepare for the aseptic procedure. Now that your hands have been washed and you've put on your sterile gloves, prepare to assemble your needle and syringe. Now draw up 10 moles of your sterile water and taking care to dispose of shops appropriately. Now put your syringe aside and tear off the tip of your catheter packaging. Now, prepare to drape the patient with the sterile sheath provided in the catheter bag. Place the sheath just beneath the penis. Now, hold and steady the penis with your non-dominant hand and use the other to cleanse the glands using your chlorohexidine soaked cotton balls. Use each cotton ball for a single circular motion typically using about three cotton balls. 
remembering to retract the foreskin and clean the urethral meatus. Now, with your non-dominant hand still on the penis, gently straighten and stretch it, lifting it to an angle of 60 to 90 degrees. With your dominant hand, first lubricate the catheter tip and advance the catheter tip from its sleeve and into the urethra. Advance the catheter completely until it's up to the bifurcation. In other words, until only the drainage and inflation ports are exposed and urine now starts flowing into the packaging. Now, using your dominant hand, uh, insert the 10 moles of sterile water from your syringe into the insertion port. As you inflate the balloon, ensure that it's not causing any pain or discomfort to your patient. Now, attach a catheter bag. Once your catheter is positioned, gently apply traction to ensure that it is properly positioned in the bladder. Then reposition the foreskin. And then finally, secure the catheter to the patient's legs using the adhesive bandage. Now, dispose of your gloves and equipment in the clinical waste bin and ensure to wash your hands after the procedure. Once your workspace has been cleared, record the volume of urine corrected, collected into the catheter bag and ensure the patient is comfortable and covered. Now, remember to stick uh, the patient's folder number on the catheter pack and record the procedure in the patient's folder. Complications of catheterization can be either patient-related or they can be catheter-related. Patient-related complications include infection, bladder fistula, bladder perforation, and bladder stones. Catheter-related complications include blockage of the catheter as well as leakage of the catheter. Thank you very much for watching.